Here's a game from round two of the European Individual Championship taking place in Serbia currently. It's uh, Tor Frederik Carson, who's a young international master from Norway, and Anton Korobov from Ukraine. Now, Korobov, I would put as one of the favourites in the tournament, although he's not the highest rated, um, with still very decent, decent uh, rating, but he is a real specialist in these kind of Swiss uh, opens, Swiss system opens. Um, very dangerous competitor, uh, very skilled player. Um, so let's see see uh, how this one went. So round two, and it's a Spanish. Again, it's one of these dilemmas you have with black in an open tournament where you're striving to play for a win. And, you know, you can bet that your opponent is really well versed in current theory. There is the danger that you can get into a position where it's very hard to generate winning chances. So, you know, how do you how do you try and get a double edged position which gives you some chances to win? Um, but isn't too risky. It's a tough one. So Korobov has decided to defend the black side of the Spanish and no marshal. And I can understand why he does that because a marshal attack um, gives rise often to very forcing variations, which, for example, can lead to end games where. Black is slightly worse, but has enough activity to make a draw. But in this case, well, Korobov has selected just one of the main lines of the closed Spanish, um, the Zeitzer variation with, with bishop b7. And Carson plays knight g5 here and the rook goes back and knight f3 so that signals that perhaps after rook e8 he would be prepared to make a draw so Korobov well it's clear he wants to play for a win because he simply plays h6 and goes for this line so knight f1 the knight continues the familiar switch round to g3 and knight a5, the bishop. Of course, you want to preserve this beautiful bishop. Bishop c2 and it can also have a great influence on this diagonal too. Of course, at the moment, it defends the four pawn. That's very important because there's pressure here. And this knight, which often is a problem for black in the, the Spanish, switches around to a better square. You know, you don't really want to allow white to play b3 and then it's yeah not in a great position so the knight swings round a4 yeah very customary um, in in the spanish you want to perhaps just generate a little bit of play here c6 super solid defending this one b3 the knight drops back to b6 and now white doesn't need to do this. You know, this is, he, he white now plays a5 and closes the queen side position. Now that isn't strictly necessary. One could keep play on both sides of the board. However, there is something I, in some ways quite attractive about closing the queen side. You know, it means you can concentrate all your forces on the king side without worrying if there's going to be counterplay on the other side of the board. But, well, it's it's still, you know, that this is a decision with consequences. So a5 played. Bishop e3, yep, sound development. And Korobov decides, okay, he wants to actually just close things completely. Um, if not, then yeah, it's possible that white would uh, play 
b4 and that will keep things actually fluid on the queen side so c5 and white decides to close things because there is pressure here this is often the problem uh, in the spanish you know white has to decide okay what do you do about this pressure here do you exchange off one of these pawns well okay there's still some pressure there or do you just close completely? And this is a very tempting move. Shutting out the bishop on b7, giving white this big space advantage. Now it's quite clear that the queen side in the center has closed completely, so play is going to shift towards the king side. g6 covers the f5 square, though c4, so this, this really does shut things down. b4. Now, if you followed my video from round one of the European individual, you'll remember I looked at a, a game in the King's Indian uh, where Ruslan Ponomaryov won a beautiful strategic game with black. And if you remember, it was actually exactly the same pawn structure in the middle of the board, completely closed. The queen side wasn't completely closed. However, uh, white never managed to generate any play. So it's a very similar situation where play, because of the closed centre, is now going to switch to the king side. Now, who stands better on the king side? Who has the better chances here? Well, I know through experience playing these kind of positions with white, that because white has this space advantage, it's easier for white to manoeuvre. White has better chances on the king side. So this is going to be a tough game for Black. And it, it was a tough game for Ponomaryov, but he managed to outplay his opponent. So can Korobov do the same? Let's have a look. Now, how do you try and build up with White in this position? You know, somehow you've got to try and make a pawn break on the king side. Very often, uh, we've looked at these kind of Spanish positions before on the channel, White ends up making a pawn break with f4. Here there's a knight on that can come to e5. So in this particular position, it's not clear that breaking with f4 is best. You know, often you play moves like this and here, but with the knight coming to e5, not so good in this situation. But it is possible to play like that. Um, you know, you, you can time the, the, the moment for f4. Carson decides to play with knight f1. Now, that makes room for the pawn to advance to g4, which can be very good to cramp black's position. So let's have a look at that. It's typical Spanish, g4. So the knight looks to return, and then very often in this kind of situation, white will shift pieces to the g-file, and sometimes you can even sacrifice a knight with knight f5. Or you might just try to, with a knight on g3, you might just try and break things open with g5. That's possible, because the knight will cover that important square, h5. So Korobov decides to take the bull by the horns and plays h5. He doesn't want to hang around. He doesn't want to wait for white to build up. I think that is, a, is an excellent practical decision. What happens if white plays g5? The knight will drop back and then black actually will be able to break open with f6. I think black has to do that. If black waits around, then it's possible that knight g3 to f5 will come, and that's extremely dangerous for black. But yes, if black breaks quickly with f6, then it'll it'll be black that takes the initiative on the f5. So I think white correctly plays the knight to h2 to defend the pawn on g4. I still like white's position here, I have to say. Knight f8. Ah, I should also mention that after h5, of course, if white exchanges, then that knight reaches a beautiful position looking at the f4 square. 
So knight h2 anyway. Best move, I think. Knight switches over. Black needs to bring pieces to the king side. King h1. Good move. He might bring the rook to the g file. There we go. Rook g1. So bishop c8 played. Good move. That needs to switch over here. And rook a7. Another an excellent move from Korobov. So he's trying to bring pieces across from the other side of the board to potentially help out on the king side. Queen d2. Okay, that seems reasonable. You want to connect the rooks and the queen comes to a, a good diagonal. Korobov exchanges. And then plays the knight back to h7. Well, how well how are both sides playing here? I mean, this strategically is very, very complex. If we compare with Ponomaryov's King's Indian, Ponomaryov had it much easier. He managed to get in this maneuver, bishop f6 to g5, to exchange off these bishops. Here, clearly, that's just not possible. But what is black doing? Well, I think, given a moment, then I think his intention was f6 and g5 and knight g6. And then the knight can come into f4. And the bishop can drop back and that rook can potentially swing across here. Not always good to play like this, you know, if a knight can come into one of these squares, but I think in this particular position, black can get away with that, because the knight is coming to g6 very quickly. And that's one of the reasons why I think white played g5, I and mean, that feels like a very natural move anyway, to cramp black's pieces, and perhaps allowing that knight to come to g4, that looks very strong. So f5 from Korobov. I think black has to break out, break out like this, good or bad. I think it's a move that has to be played. Now, that pawn is uh, threatening to advance again. So that's exchanged off en passant. And knight takes f6. So potentially the knight could come here. Let's see. Knight g5 feels like a very natural move. Uh, wasn't played, but if knight g5, then bishop h6 actually is decent. That rook can swing across. The knight will come to h5. So bishop g5 played. And this is not an easy position for black at all. I think white is doing well. Lots of interesting options. You know, maybe a knight coming here. Maybe, well, you know, if, if knight here... Yeah, perhaps knight h4, that pawn on g6 looks like in big, it's in big trouble, so that knight has to stay here. Bishop h8, right, now that looks more like it. So this rook can swing right across from the queen side, and that looks like some counterplay. The king might not be uh, very comfortable on the h1 square, and it does remind, again, I'm, we're, I'm thinking back to Ponomaryov's game, you know, where a rook came over to hassle the king on the h file. Knight h4. Very reasonable. That'll block the h-file and looks at that vulnerable pawn. Rook h7. And here white plays a very natural move. Rook g2, which isn't bad at all. Um, and looking to double on the g-file. f4 is a very thematic, instead, this wasn't played, very thematic Spanish move. Earlier, you know, I was saying, well, this might not be a good idea because this knight could reach e5. Here, it's going to be very difficult for that knight to achieve that when this pawn needs defending. And this looks like the way to go for white. So exchanging and then, well, why not bring the rook over? And rook takes f4. That will cover the knight on h4, but also... At some point, e5 could be a really nice pawn sack to break through to the g6 pawn. And don't forget, there's going to be pressure on that knight on f6. That looks like the way to go. 
Now this is move 34. I can imagine time pressure was involved at this point. It is such a complex position. And rook g2 just looks like a very natural move. I think it's also not a bad move. It seems to me like f4 was the way to go. Queen c7. Now, can white get through here? It would involve giving up bishop for knight. This didn't happen. And I can understand why he didn't want to do this. Because suddenly black is really well coordinated. And that king looks in a bit of trouble. White's, black's king also looks very good. And don't forget, bishop number, number two can swing over as well. So white plays correctly. Instead of taking here, rook g1, just building up. Slightly worrying that king can't move, but still, this is fine. Knight h5. Things are getting really tricky. Have a think. How would you play in this position? I'm, I'm going to stop for a little drink of tea. Uh, you have a little think. So white to play. What would you do next? Cheers. Not an easy position. Particularly probably when you're running very, very short of time. White's play. Well, here white played knight f5. It's just one of those classic Spanish moves. It looks so, so tempting. It's not best, though. Best was to play knight takes g6. Now, this is not obvious. Well, that's an obvious move, but white's follow-up here is certainly not obvious. You've got to see that bishop h6 is a strong move. threatening to take here and if knight f4 that can be taken and this should be good for white also after knight g6 bishop h3 needs looking at so that traps the rook so it's possible that uh, white saw this and thought this was a bit sticky but actually, after this, bishop takes and king takes, and then maneuvering the king around here. Now, white has sacked the exchange, but has fantastic compensation. Now that knight can reach f5, and that is the dream square. Covers g7. That's key. Um, and white is doing very well there. But instead, knight f5 was played. So if pawn takes, then bishop d8 to check wins the queen with that discovered attack. Bishop g7 played. Not an obvious move. Uh, looks kind of funny. Um, white is still okay here. It's rather tricky. White should play bishop d1 here to, to hassle that knight. I mean, really tricky situation. But... It's a better move. But knight takes, which kind of looks natural to get rid of that defensive bishop. But actually after this, the game is turning. Queen e3. In fact, it's interesting. We've arrived at a pawn structure that, dare I say it, we saw in the Ponomaryov game, where... Black also had access to that f4 square. So let's see this. Queen f7, knight f4. Things have really turned around. Threatening the rook. If the rook steps up, this is very nice. There is an attack on the h-file. And that's mate in a couple of moves. So the rook has to switch here. And now... Rook h5. Bit of pressure. And who knows, you know, the queen could swing over. Maybe the knight is switching over. But it won't be too long before uh, the second rook reaches the h file. White is in a lot of trouble. I mean, basically, there's no good plan. White decides to take. We've also seen this pawn structure before. <laughs> I would. Um, 
I recommend a viewing of the Ponomaryov game from round one because the themes are so similar. I find it fascinating. So this knight can reach e5. We had that in a variation in the in the Pono game, and this looks absolutely beautiful. Black is now winning strategically if that knight reaches e5. Everything falls into place for black. e5 played, so that's an attempt to get things going here, but I'm afraid black is still attacking as well. Bishop f5, good move. So this one comes into play, exchanging off that one. So black's kingside is completely secure. He's a pawn up, and the attack continues. King f7, making room for the rook to reach h8. It's interesting how white is trying to bring this queen into the game somewhere, but well, you can see all these squares are covered. Um, and after this move, rook h8, in fact, uh, white resigned. Okay, why did white resign? Well, he's a pawn down, but that's not the worst of it. It's impossible to stop the attack. You can see that this pawn is under fire. If white attempts to, ex to uh, cover that, then queen d3, that's very awkward. Takes, and that's checkmate. That's quite nice. Or if rook f2, that could be taken anyway, because rook takes and rook takes knight. And let's say here, queen b1, and mate in a couple of moves. There we go. Wow, a really tense game. And white just missed his way at critical moments. So knight takes g6 uh, was, well, very tricky, but that looked like a, a good move. And back here, strategically, yeah, it's that move f4 that uh, one sees quite often in these kind of closed Spanish positions, followed by rook f4, and that really would have put black under massive pressure. But Korobov, well, he's got strong nerves and a superb understanding, and to turn things round to a position where you get this, well, that's magical. Great stuff from Korobov. Uh, we'll be following him and seeing how he gets on in the rest of the tournament. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.